Tertiary education of any kind is full of opportunities. But sometimes it can be hard for a student to know which way to look first, or at least know where they're headed, especially when peers seem to know what they're doing. If a country does not carefully design its tertiary education system in a way that is beneficial to its development, that country can, in the long run, end up as confused as the young student. To prevent our country from falling into this trap, it is best that we start with the basics. What is important to us? What motivates us as a people and as a nation? What do we want to achieve? What is our purpose? In the interest of economic development, all these things we need to really think about. Teaching and learning should always be relevant to economic goals, collective values, and social behavior, whether it's related to your degree or other activities. The curricula of today's universities, colleges of education, and polytechnics must serve to provide work-integrated learning opportunities by getting students out into the real world even as they learn in the traditional classrooms. Students who have the opportunity to get out of the classrooms can gain genuine business and industry insights, develop their awareness of workplace culture, and also enhance critical workplace skills, such as positive leadership and communication. It is also a great opportunity to help students gain a better sense of what their purpose in life is. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund is supporting tertiary institutions to achieve these lofty goals. The secret for success would be constant and continually increasing funds from the education tax and strict monitoring and evaluation. As TED Fund works with the larger government to maintain the healthy flow of education tax to the tertiary sector, it remains a shining example of accountability as evidenced by the track record of the success of its intervention projects. These are the chronicles of the journey to institutionalize research and development in Nigeria. Hello and welcome to this edition of TED Fund, The Paradigm Shift. I am Stanley Bentu. When a project manager is accountable for their decisions and actions, the project is more likely to be delivered effectively on time and in line with expectations. But if there is no accountability, then there is a high chance that the project will fail to deliver. Accountability is often mistaken with responsibility. However, its meaning is significantly different. Accountability is the ability to be accountable and responsible for an outcome, while responsibility is more about the ability to perform and complete a given task. An activity may have several managers performing it, but ideally, one accountable person is responsible for the outcome of the work performed. The concept of accountability thus consists of assigning responsibility, ensuring that there is a sharing regarding expectations, what needs to be done and delivered, knowing how long it will take and how much it will cost to provide a quality result, communicating on the progress and completion status, being open about issues and risks, giving and receiving feedback, and accepting the blame or the fame associated with the outcome. For an organization like TED Fund, which is accountable for the distribution of the education tax and the outcomes of that investment into our tertiary education systems, the secret is to have a resolute leader and an efficient monitoring and evaluation system. 
Now this was on full display as Ted Fund put its best foot forward when members of the House of Representatives Committee on Tertiary Education paid an oversight visit recently. Now more on that later on the show, but right now let's have a deeper understanding of Ted Fund's monitoring and evaluation systems and the accountability of Ted Fund's management. Monitoring and evaluation are essential to any project or program. Through this process, organizations collect and analyze data and determine if a project or program has fulfilled its goals. Monitoring begins right away and extends through the duration of the project. Evaluation comes after and assesses how well the program performed. Because organizations track, analyze and report on a project during the monitoring phase, there's more transparency. Information is freely circulated and available to stakeholders, which gives them more input on the project. A good monitoring system ensures no one is left in the dark. This transparency leads to better accountability. With information so available, organizations need to keep everything above board. It's also much harder to deceive stakeholders. It will be recalled that architect Sonia Chono was appointed as Executive Secretary of Teth Fund by President Muhammad Buhari in March 2022 after his retirement as a Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Education. In demonstration of his determination to provide quality, transparent and accountable leadership, the Executive Secretary on Assumption of Office in a widely publicized press conference, expressed total commitment to upholding and entrenching tenets of accountability and transparency in the fund. And this he has demonstrated in the period of being at the helm of affairs through introduction of innovative policies and reforms aimed at improving efficiency. I pledge not only my loyalty but I will dedicate myself to the service of our country through this opportunity that I've been given. And by extension, I'm asking every member of staff of Ted Fund to key into this challenge, that we will up our game, we will raise the bar, we will recommit and rededicate ourselves to excellence, to needed improvements in our systems and processes, to gain time, gain efficiency, and be more um, responsive to all our stakeholders. I promote a culture of merit. I believe in team spirit. Each and every member of staff is very important. The role of the man who controls that lift it's so critical to us achieving our overall objectives. In a swift move to check corruption in the agency, 37 members of the 87-member National Research Fund Screening and Monitoring Committee, NIFS and MC, were disengaged for failing to diligently discharge the duties or whose roles were at best unclear. Earlier, he had frozen, cancelled or suspended programs and consultancies adjudged wasteful or economically disadvantageous to the fund. The current management of Tetfund under the leadership of architect Echono has introduced procurement and project management reforms to eliminate corruption, reduce delivery time of projects, prevent cost escalation and improve general efficiency in the discharge of the fund's mandate. Under the new dispensation, all projects to be executed by the fund are to be planned, packaged and selected by the beneficiary institutions for review and concurrence of the fund and there will be no more TED fund or vendor promoted projects as the needs of the institutions shall always prevail. Vice Chancellors, Provosts and Rectors of beneficiary institutions are directed to advertise and procure the projects through open competitive bidding to achieve value for money, a move 
that is commended by the Procurement Professionals Association of Nigeria, along with the threat to punish erring contractors who delay project execution or deliver poor quality jobs. Data should drive decisions. Having the right systems and processes in place provide TED Fund with the essential information needed to see the big picture. The fund works closely with the higher learning institutions to identify mistakes, successes, and things that can be adapted and replicated for future projects. Decision-making is then influenced by what was learned through past monitoring and evaluation. Well, it pays to keep your eyes on the ball and your mind on set objectives. But in order to be efficient in all that you do, you have to have the right tools. The TED Fund can easily assess the efficacy of its interventions when it comes to the implementation of physical infrastructure projects comes as no surprise to most. The question is, with the ever-increasing research fund and other matters like library interventions and so on, can TED Fund be just as skilled in tracking those two? Well, the answer to that, to that question is yes. Recall that uh, back in 2021, TED Fund had developed a project impact tracking system to evaluate the correlation of its spending on research and results so far achieved. The fund concluded a process of software to help evaluate the impact of research grants so that we're not just throwing money on research exercise, but evaluating its impact. Even when it comes to staff training, TED Fund is working with vice chancellors of universities to apply ICT in determining whether a trainee has plagiarized his or her theses. Well, the legislature is an institution which represents the common and collective interests of citizens through the enactment of laws and the exercise of oversight functions on the activities of the executive arm of government. The power of oversight is conferred on the Nigerian legislature by the 1999 Constitution to enable the National Assembly expose corruption, inefficiency, or waste in the execution or administration of laws within its legislative competence and in the disbursement and administration of funds appropriated by the acts. Our members of the House of Representatives Committee on Tertiary Education and Services were led by the chairman, Honorable Aminu Suleiman, and they paid a visit, an oversight visit, to TED Fund recently. Here's how it went. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TET Fund, says it has recorded over 60 billion naira decline in revenue available for its operations. The Executive Secretary of the fund, architect Sonia Chono, disclosed this in Abuja Friday when members of the House of Representatives Committee on Tertiary Education and Services, led by the Chairman, Honorable Aminu Suleiman, paid an oversight visit to TET Fund. TED Fund is majorly funded by the 2% education tax paid from the accessible profit of companies registered in Nigeria. Architect Chono, while speaking on the operations of the fund and the state of finances, especially from 2017 to date, said 2021 collection was what the fund used to operate in 2022, a figure that had dropped to 189 billion naira from a peak of 257 billion naira in the previous years. Today, we will be appraising them on the operations of that one and our state of finances, especially uh, the trajectory of the chairman from 2017 up to 2020. We saw, we saw a weakness, a steady rise in collections under the education tax. But unfortunately, last year, for the 2021, there was a sharp drop. And that has left us in a 
them their position. And we, for example, uh, as I said, from 154 billion in 2017, it rose steadily to 257 billion, the tax collections over the years. So by 2020, we got to 57 billion. But unfortunately, last year's uh, collection, which is what we used to operate this year, dropped sharply to 189 billion. So over 60 billion drop in revenue or in resources available to tech fund. And the way we operate, 2021 collections are used for 2022 operations. The executive secretary noted that given the president's commitment to increase funding for the education sector as promised to the global community via the Global Partnership for Education, the tax rate last year was increased from 2 to 2.5%, with a commitment of reaching 3% before the end of the current administration. The good news is that given Mr. President's commitment that he gave to the global community on increased funding for education, and again with the usual support of the National Assembly, this, the tax rate last year was increased from 2 to 2.5%. But the target is that before the end of this administration, it will increase to 3%, which is the commitment that Mr. President has already given in writing to the global community, to the global partnership for education. While referencing Tetfund's level of transparency, the executive secretary commended the support and cooperation that Tetfund has enjoyed from the Oversight Committee and the National Assembly while seeking its support in terms of favorable legislation. The National Assembly to support Mr. President in effecting that amendment so we can focus attention on education and its relevance and importance to our national affairs and the foundation for all sort of growth and progress that we will aspire to in this country. So it's a major area that will be seeking the support of the National Assembly in terms of legislation. Responding to the Executive Secretary, Honorable Aminu Suleiman assured the fund of its continued support and cooperation to ensure a strengthening of the system and its commitment to oversight requirements, even as he urged Tetfund to mandate state institutions benefiting from its interventions to submit reports of their operations within three weeks. We congratulate you and we assure you of uh, our support. Uh, without prejudice to the fact that um, sometimes we, we can agree to disagree. And I'm sure you are familiar with, as I said, we have had call several, uh, even when you have the permanent secretary to disagree entirely with the ministry. I don't um, are not uh, predicated on any personal motive, uh, but uh, to share with you uh, we are managed, we felt uh, differently from the way things are been done. And in most cases, uh, we usually arrive at the same page. I have no doubt that our relationship will continue here. The essence is for us, like I said, to better the system. Uh, but if you take um, federal government subvention, then you must uh, be able to account for this. I use this opportunity to advise that all these responsible for this should ensure that within three weeks all the states and uh, institutions comply. If we did not, the committee will decide whether they are entitled to continue to benefit uh, from the subvention that is under this control of the uh, the lawmaker also criticized the situation where state governors set up tertiary institutions and abandoned them to Tetfund for all funding except salaries. Felt that they are state institutions and they are not responsible to us. And the decision of the committee is that if they did it, uh, truly speaking, we ask Tetfund to stop funding them because they cannot collect hospital for and refuse to account for it. It's impossible. They have to account. If they refuse to I think because they are state institutions, then they should go back to their state governors and get funding, which is the first, uh, which is the, the right, even the right thing that is supposed to be done. Tetfund is supposed to be assisting 
But we have a situation where every governor now set up an institution and abandoned it to touch for for funding, uh, except salaries, but everything is being left uh, uh, for I don't think that is the idea. Uh, the intent is for Tedpon to complement. Nigeria is at a time in its history where its academia is much needed because the nature of today's economy is predicated on information, knowledge, and technology. Information is always multiplying. Knowledge is always expanding and changing. Technology is always advancing, with these three foundations constantly shifting like tectonic plates. Tertiary education in Nigeria cannot afford to stand still, lest it is left behind. It must keep evolving and progressing to keep up with the national need. And now before we go, let's talk about the protocols for maximum impact. TED Fund's Monitoring and Evaluation Department has the responsibility of ensuring that there is value for money on intervention projects being executed by beneficiary institutions in the areas of physical infrastructure and library development through project monitoring, project performance and measurements, and determining and recommending the next tranche of funds as the intervention projects progress towards full completion. The functions of the Monitoring and Evaluation Department include to carry out monitoring and evaluation of ongoing projects so as to remedy bottlenecks in the course of implementation, to carry out inspection visits for the release of the second tranche and or final tranche across infrastructure-based intervention projects, as well as to recommend the release of the applicable subsequent tranche of funds upon satisfactory completion of the intervention projects. The operational methodologies are helping the department become more effective in its monitoring and evaluation activities. Now these are being employed and deployed for the work and the results have been quite encouraging. The department has consistently been carrying out snap check monitoring and evaluation exercises on ongoing projects in various beneficiary institutions with the aim of keeping tab on new projects in order to ensure that the execution processes are done with due diligence. And that is the paradigm shift. Join us again on the next edition of the program. But until then, thank you for stopping by. Good night.